What if you had the opportunity to have a coffee with your 18 year old self? What advice would you offer? And would you actually take the advice I'd offer? I'm absolutely fascinated by that question. I interview people from all walks of life, from Heineken Cup winners, New York Times bestselling authors, local taxi man, you name them, I've interviewed them. Be inspired, learn and grow from the experience of others. Welcome to the What I Know Now podcast with Mark Kelly. On a wet evening in Dublin city centre, I sat down with former RTE presenter, hotelier and one and only motivational speaker, B.B. Baskin, a live podcast as part of the What I Know Now Inspire conference. Having become the first woman in Ireland to host her own TV show, B.B. would go on to live in India for 15 years where she managed her own hotel. However, she's back in Ireland delivering motivational talks to help people invite change into their lives. In this episode, we'll chat about what she learned during those 15 years' stay in India, change she noted in Irish culture, at being away for so long, why people are fearful of change, and so much more. You are going to absolutely love Dip's episode, and genuinely one of my favourite episodes I've done. On with the show. I'm so happy to have you here. You come from Cork, so thank you very much. Firstly, I really, really appreciate that. Um, so, my first question You were such a popular figure on, on the Irish television in the 80s and 90s. What was it like being in the public eye, and did you enjoy it? No. <laughs> Most uncomfortable with it. And it was Shane, I think, who taught me the phrase tonight, meaningless success. Mm. That was really how I felt about it. I, I didn't know how to describe it really until, until just now. <coughs> I, <coughs> excuse me. I didn't see success at all in that way, nor do I still. Um, also, I was simply doing a job and doing it to the best of my ability. It was about paying your mortgage and paying what used to be then your ESB bill. And there was nothing more. You should have seen the state of me in the office. Ripped jeans, sneakers, cheap ones, and a leather jacket. And then you'd have to walk out in this fabulous suit that would probably retail in fancy shops for a thousand pounds at the time. No, 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 that uh, wasn't me at all. I, at one stage, was it every week for six years you were on TV? Um, I started off doing uh, five days a week. Um, and the run would be over about 32 weeks. And then I got my own show, and that was once a week on television for about 34 weeks again. And did you used to have the show, Abby, where people used to ask you for sending fan mail? <laughs> and, uh, I'm not going down that road. Okay. I went down that road <laughs> okay, I, last Saturday week on the Ray Darcy show because it's after 9 o'clock. Okay, well, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Uh, I thought I'd put it to it, bed. Maybe I'll come back to it later on. Or not. Oh, I couldn't give a damn. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> not going to talk about it. So, so somebody... Um, actually, I'll keep back for later on, actually. I'll keep You're back. the one that's going to get embarrassed. I'm, I'm going to keep back it. later on. I'm I'll far too old I'll to give a damn. Okay. So you, uh, you ended up actually going to India. Yeah. And you went there for three weeks as a holiday. Yeah. But you ended up staying there for 15 years. Mm. How was it I don't do holiday? planning. I see no point in planning. And on a serious note... Uh, when I was six years old, my father took me for a walk after school. So I would anticipate that would have been about four o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, by six o'clock, he was dead. Heart attack. And somehow that has never left me. And what it taught me is, what is the point of doing all this planning? Because you simply never know when, whether you're going to be around to see it through. And that's one of the reasons why, and I thought Pat was wonderful, I didn't come up for the business plan that he was giving out. I just won't do planning, because I don't know if I'm going to be around. So hence, it was very easy for me to go on a holiday to India for three weeks. I liked what I saw, and so I stayed. So tell us about setting up your first hotel, getting into yoga, and falling in love with India. Well, when you talk about setting up my first hotel, you make it sound as if I've had several. No, no, once <laughs> was enough. And in a developing country at that, it makes it that little bit tougher, you know? There's no logic when it comes to making business decisions. There's no timekeeping. But, but for, most, for most of us, we're going to actually set up something like that in a foreign country with no experience doing it. Mm. We're going to plan, we're going to think about it. It's a big investment. What gave you the confidence to go and do something like that with no previous experience? I have no fear of failure. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. At all? I didn't have any idea whether it would succeed or fail, but I truly didn't care. Because I think that if you do fail at something, anything, be it a relationship or a project or business, uh, you have to take time to lick your wounds, but not too long. Uh, and then you 
just do a lot of reflection and and when you come to do the next project or the next relationship you think well what kind of a mess did I make of the last one and what can I bring with me out of that so that I don't repeat my history because we have a great and handy habit of repeating our histories and that's fine and dandy if they're good histories but we can repeat the bad ones as well. Wouldn't that be quite different from the Irish psyche? That oh if yeah. You, if you've got a failure in Ireland, it's yeah. a bit of a, you know, you're going to frown upon it, and yeah. it's a little bit like you don't necessarily tell too many people about it. But then you going over, you don't really care. Roll of the dice. No, oh, I couldn't care less. I really couldn't. Um, and also, one of your earlier speakers, I, I learned so much this evening. Congratulations, it's been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, when you're making changes in your life, should you tell people? No, definitely not, the speaker said. And I was interviewed, in fact, just before uh, I came here this evening and I was asked the same question. When you made the big decision to leave the fancy job in RTE, what did the people around you say? I said, I didn't tell anybody, except my best friend. When you, did you notice a difference when you were in India and then coming back to Ireland in the culture, the psyche? Yeah, well, I was gone for a total of 20 years. I was five years in London and then 15 in India. Um, I think the core of the Irish psyche is still the same. That great sense of humour, uh, I, I like that and it's still there. But I've noticed in particular two things, I think. Uh, one is that people are working too hard, those who have jobs. It, it's rat race gone crazy. Now, I have a couple of friends whom I've got to know since I've come back and uh, they're successful businessmen. They're always men for some reason so far. They're in their 50s, but they are working all the time and I ask them for what? And I write blogs about it and I ask them what's it all for? And I think they're running themselves into ill health, mentally and physically, but they won't stop. And I think they need to. Because one of the things that I learned in India uh, is that we all should have more fun in life. I could be completely idle, doing nothing, and it's very good for you, because it is in that process that you still the mind. What do you call the snow globe? Yeah, that stops going round. And it's very good, but somehow we make superheroes in Ireland out of people who, who say proudly, I worked so long hours last night, and I think I'll bugger off and have some fun. <laughs> you live longer. Yeah. And have you noticed anything in the difference in confidence from the people mm. in India and Ireland and Maybe, would you like to share some of those talks? Well, it's odd in the sense of coincidental, if such a thing exists, which I don't think it does, um, that you brought that up. Because since I've come back, I've been asked to give these motivational talks around the country. And they're really talks about, you know, this life that I've led and why I, I gave up the jobs and how I coped with bringing that change in and not being afraid of the failure and all of that sort of thing. And in particular, I'm asked to give these talks to women's groups. Um, and I, I thought, when I gave my first talk, what the hell's going on in Ireland now? Because I walked into a room full of educated, well-dressed, and probably quite wealthy women. And I thought, what's wrong with you that you need to come along and listen to me, you know? And when I did a bit of analysis and did a little bit of research and asked a few questions over months, apparently it's because they're lacking confidence. I think that's terribly sad. In the name of God, just try to believe in yourself. Set yourself reasonable goals and stop whinging about men getting in the way. They never got in my way. And, and, have, you got, and have you got any, any reason why people are so fear to, fear to change? And like you, you change, it's so easy, it just breezes off. For an awful lot of people, that would be so big. Do, do you know why? Or have you got any idea? I back. think it's all got to do with the quintessential element of fear, which is that it's a thing that can just come up with big invisible hands and strangle you, especially at four o'clock in the morning, the demonic hour. And I think fear is just a thing that a lot of people can't handle. I could explain it to you, but it's a bit, <coughs> excuse me, off the uh, off beat. Um, you will know that the reason that I was attracted to India was because of a wellness system called Ayurveda. And even when I was working here in Ireland, for decades beforehand, I was a student of this wellness system. That wellness system explains fear quite well, uh, briefly, because it's a 5,000-year-old system of you know, goodness. Briefly, it divides all of us in the world, no matter what race, into just three mind-body types. 
And there's one particular type that is full of fear. And unless they work in themselves, that will never change. And I think that's, that's, that uh, makes sense to me. My particular type doesn't really know fear. We're just bad tempered. <laughs> but India knocked that shit out of me. <laughs> and that was my next question. Did you, did you learn anything particularly in India that you took home and you were very glad you learned? Yeah, yeah, an awful lot of stuff. It certainly made me a better person. And actually, I mean, I used to be a bit of a fiery one, you know. And I discovered that Indians don't like anger. And if you get angry, they won't engage. You know, over here in the Western world, I think we'd like a bit of a powwow. I say this and you fire back and blah, blah. No, they won't engage at all. And then I got to thinking over years, because I did a lot of reading there too. Uh, the only one that really suffers when you put yourself in an angry situation is yourself. Mm -hmm. Then your energy gets depleted. You feel miserable, feel bad about yourself. Train yourself to get out of it. Or there's another little trick I learned that's good. You know Osho, the Indian thinker, Sri Bhagnesh, who, yeah, who influenced the Beatles very much. Well, he was a bit of a bad boy with all the women and the 96 Rolls Royces. But he wrote a lot of very good stuff, wise stuff. And I think he also made a lot of Indian thinking accessible to the West. And one of the lessons I learned from him, not personally, of course, uh, was sometimes you need to fake anger. Because you know how there are certain people you meet in the world and they just won't take on board what you say if you say it in a very nice, gentle, reasonable monotone. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to fake it and say, now listen, I told you this before, but don't ever let it get inside your head and then walk away and smile to yourself. And what gives you energy and makes you happy every day? Energy, well, it's certainly not my age, good God, and that's the one thing I can't change. Um, I don't exercise enough, I eat very well, I drink too much probably to be really healthy, you know, some of those things. Uh, but the energy I get from the happiness thing, I think it's all related. Um, I, I was asked again in an interview recent, very recently, what, would you, what do you do when you wake up in the morning and you don't feel like getting out of bed? I said, oh, for Christ's sake, that hasn't even happened once. I get up about half four or five, and she said to me, what do you do? I said, well, sometimes nothing. I'll take a video of the dawn, or I look up some quotes about the beauty, and I listen to the stillness, and I'll still my mind. Now, Irish people and Western people will say, that's the lazy old bitch. She does nothing in the morning. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually doing an awful lot of good for myself in the morning. And that contributes to the happiness. And if you were having advice to your 18-year-old self, uh, what advice are you offering? Oh, I would say have more fun. <coughs> have more fun in life. It goes back to the point I made earlier. You mustn't take it all that seriously. I would also say, ask yourself, how important is money? I, I admire uh, Pat very much that he made all that money. I went to a Vedic astrologer in India, just as a tourist, you know, like <laughs> as here you'd be in a doctor's waiting room and you read your horoscopes and passes the time. So I went not believing any of it, but Hindus take their astrology very seriously. Uh, and he told me two things in particular. One was, he said, you'll change your career in two years' time. I said, no, 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 it's going to be media, writing the book. He said, no. And in precisely two years, I became a hotelier. But the other thing was even far more significant. He said to me, you'll never be rich, but you'll always have enough money to do. 16 years later, now he's spot on. I'm in that category. So I'd say that also. Uh, it's great if you know how to make money. I haven't a clue, but I don't feel the miss of it. Okay, it's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, one last question. Did you have any important mentors as you were going uh, no. through your life? Or no. What, how did you? Uh, <laughs> was that the wrong no, answer? No, the answer? Am I so telling you, you off know, or you're something? Not, you're, not. You're, you're, you're telling me the truth, which is great. So, no. So did you just go off good instinct? I paddled my own canoe. Yeah, I paddled my so, so you just found that you just forward in, you kind of guided you? Well, the, it was circumstantial at the start. Uh, just briefly there, I did mention earlier in the series note that my father died when I was six. My mother was only 38. It was very young to be widowed back then. Uh, my two sisters were eight and nine years older than me. They were off at boarding school. Mum was trying to get used to her new life. 
So I was very alone, not lonely, but alone. And then because I grew up as a Protestant in a very small community in Donegal, uh, I never had a classmate at national school. Now, did you ever meet anyone who never had a classmate? No. There were only 12 kids in the school, and there were eight classes. So again, that really constructed this sense of what you could call isolation. But that isolation came to a loneliness. And then there was segregation up there in the north on religious grounds, and I wasn't allowed to play with the Roman Catholics. So again, I'm alone, apart from one mate across the street. I think that's where I became this person that paddles their own canoe. And that's what I've always done. It's funny, I've got to ask my last question. But well, no, 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 even though I should ask my last question, because I was going to ask, what are your plans? <laughs> <laughs> A professional interviewer would never do that. You have to do that switch in your head all the time. When you sit there and you say, oh, fuck, he's just answered that. That was my next question. There you go, not professional. Plans to continue to be happy. That's as far as I can go. Thank you very much for your last You've been listening to the What I Know Now podcast with Mark Kelly. To subscribe to the podcast, just enter WYKN into iTunes or any Android podcast of choice. Or check out the website at www.wykn.co. I'd love to get your feedback, either positive or negative, about the episode, what action you're going to take. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, have an absolutely super day. Bye.